Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining our session. So I would say that we get started. Um, today, I would like to talk about it, uh, which steps we took to implement um, processes and also implement equipment in order to manufacture high-potent APIs. Our focus is on sterile pharmaceuticals. First, let me briefly introduce myself. My name is Franz Kainz. I'm a molecular biologist by training. I joined for Sinus Kavi in 2010. And over the last um, four years, I've been working for the Fresenius Kavi product partnering business unit, where we um, offer contract development and also contract manufacturing to our customers. During that time, I got a chance to be involved in several projects where we implemented, scaled up, developed sterile pharmaceuticals um, that also contained high potent APIs. And also, uh, not all of them, but some of them also included aseptic manufacturing requirements. Special precautions are required for handle high potent APIs. And the reason why actually we moved to high potent APIs was really that we see now a trend that more and more APIs are coming to the market. Uh, so there's a real opportunities when you're actually able to process high potent APIs. Special precautions are needed because high potent also means highly toxic. And so therefore the containment concept is really central to handle high potent APIs. Well, um, Fresenius Kavi has a strong focus on manufacturing sterile pharmaceuticals. So obviously we're coming from that perspective that for us it's always really central that we, um, that we protect the product uh, from the environment in order to maintain sterility during the manufacturing process. With high potent APIs now, it's not only enough anymore to protect the product from the environment, but we also need to make sure that we protect the environment, including our employees, um, from the product. I would, already, I would already like to give you a broad uh, overview of, of, my, of my talk, of the structure of my talk. First, I will present briefly where we are coming from at Fresenius Kavi, where our expertise is. Then I will focus on the process itself because it's not only about getting the right equipment in order to handle high potent APIs, it's also to implement the right process, the right process flow for guaranteeing safety. Then I will come to our containment concept for guaranteeing that we both guarantee safety to our employees, but also to um, guarantee sterility of the product. And then I will conclude my talk with general comments about um, what it takes to manufacture sterile pharmaceuticals with high potent APIs. So the common denominator of Fresenius Kavi is definitely sterile pharmaceuticals. So we belong to the manufacturing leaders and market leaders when it comes to infusion therapy and clinical nutrition. So our main markets are for that are Europe, Latin America, Asia Pacific. Also we manufacture and develop a range of IV generic drugs where we have the main markets in Europe and also in the US. The company has grown considerably over the last years now with more than 30,000 employees worldwide and with more than 25 manufacturing sites. Uh, the company had around 5 billion euro sales last year with around 930 million euro of EBIT and it belongs to 100% to the Fresenius Healthcare Group and to give you a bit of a picture the company has the Fresenius Healthcare Group has a turnover of 20 billion euro so not a small player anymore. The product partnering division now is your door to the expertise and manufacturing capacities within Fresenius Kavi. We are also here at uh, this exhibit at the stand 5Q23, so also please take advantage of it, drop by, and let's then talk about specific projects more in detail than actually we would have the opportunities here. And this slide now really summarizes what the whole company does. So we develop and manufacture a lot of different sterile pharmaceuticals, so pretty much from simple aqueous solutions to complex emulsions, so fat emulsions, to liposomal formulations, suspensions, lyophilicids, so everything that can be pretty much injected, we develop it. 
and manufacture it. And we fill that in a, in a range of different container types, such as vials, bottles, ampules, IV bags, refill syringes. All that can be then combined with high potent APIs. The job of product partnering is really also then in the beginning to identify a suitable manufacturing site. So we, we would identify one of our um, sites that is actually a good match to our customers' needs. When it comes now to high potent APIs, we would go to, um, to our manufacturing site in Austria, in Graz, because this is the competence center for aseptic manufacturing and also for handling high potent APIs. And therefore, I would like to tell you some key figures about this manufacturing site to give you a bit of a perspective. So the, that plant has around 700 employees. It manufactures around 90 million units of quite complex sterile pharmaceuticals. So we can offer there the whole range of sterile pharmaceuticals such as aqueous solutions, oil-based formulations that are often combined with high potent APIs because of the lipophilic nature of the API. Also emulsions, uh, so here we are building up on our clinical nutrition technology because we realized that the oil phase of the emulsion can be perfectly combined with high potent APIs. Suspension now is also a big topic in combination with high potent APIs and also we recently introduced also lyophilicides in that manufacturing sites. That plant has a focus on glass containers, so we actually offer glass vials, bottles, glass ampules, but also we have a prefilled syringe line uh, where we can offer plastic, ampule, uh, pl plastic and glass syringes and bags and the plant is also globally approved by the US FDA and we're also manufacturing for Japan. Yeah? In terms of the history, uh, there, uh, we have, the history goes back in terms of thermal sterilization back to the 70s. Aseptic uh, filling was established in the early 90s. Uh, and obviously, so there's a long history also for the containment concept, which is central to aseptic filling. And um, around six years ago, we started with high potent API. So I've mentioned now the term high potent API quite frequently already, but what do we understand when we talk about high potent APIs? I would like to refer to uh, definitions from Ader et al. So a pharmaceutical um, API would be, um, would be called a high potent API when uh, the biological activity is around 150 microgram per kilogram of body weight, so that corresponds to around 10 milligram of a daily dose. Compare that to acetylic salicylic acid, like aspirin, which has around 325 milligrams, so it's 30 times more, con more, con uh, more concentrated when it comes to high potent APIs. Another definition would, uh, would uh, address the concentration of the API in the, in the air, in the, in the air that is breathed in, which is, at, which is called the occupational exposure limit which would be at 10 microgram per cubic meter. Many of you are scientists and have a technical background, but still it's interesting like what that really means. So think about an artificial sweetener where a tablet has around one gram and then disperse that in the entire Empire State Building. And then you would have a concentration of one microgram per cubic meter. So, so it's quite scary if you think about that, that high potent APIs are are a real threat also then to the environment and to our people. Drug products that are, have a high selectivity that cause cancer, mutations, developmental effects would also be classified as high potent APIs even if they have a higher occupational exposure limit. And for our dedicated team that is evaluating the high potent APIs when we get a new inquiry and they basically would um, get information from various sources, such as the material safety data sheet, or for instance, from the clinical investigators brochure, or from toxicological assessment. But if no information about that is available at all, at all then it would be classified as a high potent API by default, in order actually to guarantee safety. Well, we at Fresenius Carvey also implemented um, occupational exposure bands so the, the ones of you who are familiar with high potent APIs have definitely probably seen that. So with the definition of 10 microgram per cubic meter, uh, the high potent APIs would start in the range of 
in the band D with one to 10 microgram per cubic meter. And the higher we go up there, the more toxic the drug substance becomes. And so here I would like to show you just a slide out of our, um, out of our corporate uh, SUP handling high potent APIs. And basically when you deal with high potent APIs, there are a lot of uh, like, like severe health issues that one would not want to get, for instance, um, uh, for instance, with life-threatening effects, starting already at one to 10 uh, milligram per day. The problem with, with high potent APIs is also that there is no clear warning symptom. Medical treatment becomes really an, a problem if employees are exposed to that. So I can go on and on. My, the bottom line of that is one needs to make sure to guarantee safety and therefore the exposure potential during manufacturing is key for evaluating and for implementing a drug substance with a high potent API. So there our team would basically distinguish between solid forms and liquid forms. So if the API comes in a solid form or in a liquid form and uh, if, it becomes, if, it, if we actually get the API delivered in a solid form, then the dust potential of the drug substance is key. So if it comes in a ballot form or in a fine powder, which can be easily dispersed in the atmosphere. Another factor of the evaluation is the scale of operation. Very, very obvious, makes sense if you deal with a small scale or a large scale. And also how long uh, does the employee deal with the drug substance? Is it like less than 30 minutes or longer than that? All that now goes into a matrix. So we would classify then the exposure potential of the drug substance from a scale one to four for the three different categories. And with that in mind then, we would then combine the exposure potential with the occupational exposure limit uh, and basically put that into a matrix. So this is actually then the, the image which I present here. So we combine that and bring it into a level, uh, to a matrix. And so here I would like to stress then that even a drug substance that would not fall into the classical category of a high potent API would still be handled in a similar way. So basically, as we actually explained before, OEL level D would fall into a high potent API as we actually talked about before. But even if basically the exposure uh, level is high, we would also classify um, a drug substance with an OEE level of higher than 10 microgram per cubic meter as a high potent API if the exposure potential is high. And in that category, we have, for instance, hormones, which is a very big topic for us. So with that category now, we actually defined specific measures, what is required in order to handle then the high potent APIs for um, manufacturing um, aseptic, aseptically or also for manufacturing sterile pharmaceuticals which are terminal sterilized. Here I would not like to go to every, to every detail, but basically it starts off with standard GMB manufacturing and then basically the more hazardous the drug substance becomes, the more steps we actually we include and I will have some more practical examples to illustrate that a bit better. But one important point is definitely the negative pressurization because if you think about aseptic manufacturing, it's actually the reverse. We always need to make sure that no germs get, uh, get into the manufacturing process. When it comes to high potent API, we have actually specific containment concept that allow us to work with negative pressure so that, no hazard, that there is no health threat to our employees and the environment. Of course, barrier technology is a big topic, using specific HEPA filters, using specific valves. Basically, when you, for instance, have dedicated equipment, you want to make sure that when you actually uh, change then the process and transfer the tank from one location to the other, that you are not exposed to some residues of the high potent API. And, and when it comes, for instance, to the most severe um, category, you would have a completely automated robotic system. Yeah? That brings me already now from the process now, from the manufacturing process or from the, from the process of evaluating a truck more to the, basically the equipment side. And I want to stress that because it's not all about the equipment. It's really also about the process. Therefore, I put the process before the equipment. Yeah? But now let's talk a bit about the, 
about the equipment that we actually invested in and implemented in that allows us to handle those very toxic drug substances. So when you think about an, a, an, an, the manufacturing process of a sterile pharmaceutical, if it's now aseptically manufactured or terminally sterilized, it doesn't make that much of a difference. The main point here is that the compounding is the central point where there's the biggest exposure potential to the employee. Therefore, therefore, due to that exposure potential, we invested in a specific containment concept in an isolator that has, a really, that has some nice fancy features. So basically, the whole compounding is done within that isolator. It can be connected to mobile vessels. I have a few slides then about that. It has uh, cleaning place zip lenses in there that allows us to do the cleaning in the isolator. Then um, the, filter the filters can be changed completely safely. Uh, it works with both negative and positive uh, pressure, depending on the, on the API, of course. And also the waste is actually can be dispo can be um, can be actually put into a space in a continuous bag that also guarantees safety. So some slides about that. So uh, when, I, when it comes now to aseptic manufacturing, about it, we also have an onboard VHP generator, so vaporized hydrogen peroxide generator, so that basically it also allows us then to bring in an API and compound it in an aseptic manner. This is essential because when you deal with suspensions, one cannot sterile um, filter the product then afterwards, so you need to be already sure that you're aseptically during the compounding phase. Um, so there are then direct connections to the ports. Let me just show you that also, how that looks like. So here you have the port systems and we would then connect dedicated vessels um, for basically connecting then the tank to our filling line. And also when it comes, for instance, to drug substances that are highly oxygen uh, sensitive, you can actually work under nitrogen atmosphere in order to guarantee quality safety. Then just a few slides on that to give a bit more impression on, on that isolator, which is really one of the key factors here. Um, so basically, the operator would stand here and could do then the complete weighing here. The whole isolator is actually certified to work up to an OE level of 0.1 microgram per cubic meter. So think about it again with that example, what I mentioned before. So it's basically a one tablet of one gram can, that can be dispersed in, uh, in 10 Empire States buildings. Yeah, So quite impressive. And uh, here now I would like then to focus a bit more on the connection. So basically we have a rapid port, a rapid port system uh, that can be can be then safely used in connect connection with the different tanks with the dedicated vessels for emulsions. So the emulsions are a great drug carrier for high potent APIs where the lipophilic API would go into the oil phase. So here we use then small tanks again with those specific uh, port system or for other high potent APIs we have a disposable bag system implemented as well. And this is then just a photo about it, where we connect that vessel then to the larger tanks for manufacturing uh, batches of high potent APIs up to 6,000 liters. And on the bottom line, you see some images of our system where we really thought about it. Well, if you deal with a high potent API, you want to have dedicated tanks. Therefore, pretty much for every customer, we have like specific tanks that allow us then to handle those really dangerous drug substances. When our team now evaluates then a drug substance, I would like now to come to some general comments about that. Uh, it's not just basically about the process and the containment. There are a lot of things that need to be taken into account and therefore I would like then to wrap up a bit my talk with some general comments about health and safety, GMP considerations and environment. So for the health and safety, I've talked about a lot about the containment uh, concept and about the uh, about technical measures that are used specifically for the requirements of the product. Personal protective equipment is, of course, a very important issue, basically, which goes way beyond the standard GMP requirements. 
And of course, we do have like a lot of SOPs about that, but it's not just about the SOPs, it's about actively training the people about it. In terms of GMB, um, of course, we are certified uh, to handle high potent APIs. I have a slide about that. And when it comes to cleaning validation, so I've read in one paper the, 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 the argument that establishing occupational exposure bands only makes sense if you can also monitor against the occupational exposure bands. So cleaning validation is a big topic, so we always bring the analytical team on board in order to make sure that we also know what, let's say, one microgram per cubic meter actually also means in analytical terms. And in terms of environment, also I've done a slide about that. Of course, one needs to make sure that we properly um, disregard, properly um, get rid of all the waste material. So this is then basically just uh, the slide about showing that we have the GMP certificate, that, uh, that we actually are approved by the authorities to manufacture aseptically and terminally sterilized products for high potent APIs, including hormones, cytostatic drugs, even that we actually do not manufacture cytostatic drugs in quads, and also antibiotics. And um, in terms of managing high potent APIs from an environmental perspective and employee perspective, um, we carry out the risk analysis, which is a very central point of the process. We established a very simple thing, which is still very effective. So we have a red hand warning sign, and this is then on all the different uh, samples and also on the pallets in the warehouse and that goes really hand in hand with our people who are trained of course to, danger, to, to treat and to deal with the dangerous drug substances they know right away this is the red flag to basically um, process those drug substances in the way how they are trained and also which is defined in our SOPs we, we dispose our high potent API drug substances separately from our regular drug substances and since we, I mentioned emulsions and oil-based formulations several times, we also have a separation of the fat content. And if it basically it's required, we would deactivate the high-potent API by ozone treatment or activated carbon. With that in mind, let me wrap up my talk. So our plant in Graz is approved uh, up to an OE level, occupational exposure level of 0.1 microgram per cubic meter for handling hormones, antibiotics, except beta lactams, and other high potent drug substances. We've installed a containment uh, facility for the compounding that I've showed with that isolator, with dedicated tanks, dedicated um, um, vessels that is connected to the filling line, and also we have a disposal bag system that allows us to handle those high potent APIs, always with in mind that the employee should never ever get in touch with those drug substances. The process flow that I've described, how, described how we categorize uh, high potent APIs is an essential part of it because it's not all about the equipment, but also about the process. And what I've not really talked about much about the filling line, so here um, we have uh, dedicated and disposable filling equipment um, that um, also allows us then to deal with the substances. And of course, it's not only about SOPs, it's also about training our employees. With that in mind, please visit us at our booth. We're very happy then to discuss any details of any inquiries you might have. So it's in the hall five, 5Q23. And with, with that in mind, Thank you very much for, for coming here and for your interest.